Good morning, everybody. It's 10.01. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is approve the minutes of the meeting of March 12, 2015. Motion's been made. Are there a second? All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Item three is receive the report of judgment for the month of February. Motion been made. Are there a second? All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign. Ayes have it. Uh, item uh, four is ratify the approval. There is uh, four items. Uh, the payroll, the changes to uh, some compensation by uh, some, some administrative stuff that need to be done. And then the action uh, item C is another uh, modification of an application. And C is to pay the claims for NCPERS. Motion been made to move all four. Are there a second? All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item five is approve the claims docket. Motion been made. Seconded. All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item uh, six is approve the following applications. We have eight service applications. Motion been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Uh, item uh, seven is receive the report of death and approve the continuation of pension. Motion been made, are there a second? All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item eight is receive the report of deaths and authorize the payment of $5,000 benefit and authorize the secretary to make necessary changes. And sad to say, there were nine of those. Motion been made and second. All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item nine is to receive the report of death and make the, authorize the secretary to make the necessary changes to the form. Motion been made on the second. All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item 10 is uh, receive a presentation from Mickey Forey or his representative coming the application for disability not in the line of duty as permitted under the ordinance. Uh, Counselor, do you have anything to, do we need to go into executive session on this, sir, or anything unusual about this? There is really nothing unusual about this. Uh, I've reviewed the medical records and the statements from our own physician, Dr. Monike. This particular person is uh, certainly 100% disabled, not in the line of duty and uh, will not be returning to work. So I do not think you need executive session. Okay. What's well, the pleasure of the board? Motion been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item 11 is approve the request for the following to terminate the vested rights and commence drawing and retirement benefit. Motion been made, are there a second? All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item 12 is approve the following applications for vested rights, and we have one, two, three, four of those. Motion been made, second. All those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Item uh, 13 is uh, discuss or authorize the actuary funding policy, and you have that in your uh, packet. And, uh, Renee, would you like to say anything about this, or just to update, bringing it up to date? This actually just formalizes our funding policy and segregates the differences that you'll see on the CAFR, which now has the GASB 67, which has doesn't use the same type of funding methods described in the CAFR for the amount we're funded and those types of things. So this one actually says that we are using our funding policy based upon the actuarial calculations that we use normally through our actuarial evaluation, not the accounting 67 to make funding policy decisions. So it's just to segregate the difference between the two instead of going up and down in volatility and making contribution changes, we're using the standard that we've used before, which is the four-year smooth. The, the, the methods that we have here, the amortization to make our funding decisions, not what's used in the CAFR on a GASB 67. I have one question, if I'm... Go right ahead, sir. On, uh, on page two, under a frequency of actuarial evaluations, 
Would it be good if we had um, at least every so often uh, on, on that, or is that just as regular evaluations? Should we have a time frame on that or, or not? We this on page two is the is the actuarial cost method. Uh, I'm looking at the bottom of page two frequency of actuarial evaluations. That's just the the valuations manage the risk. We're saying that we're having the valuations on another page or annually. Um, Didn't know if it, under that under the frequency we should have at least uh, on that. So, Randy, are you saying that under the, I think, if I may, Randy, I think what Randy is saying, Renee, is that under the, where it says funding risk mm -hmm. and the frequency of actuarial evaluations, should we specify that that's going to be an annual process? At, at least annual. At least annual process. We, we can yes. add that terminology. That's fine. Yeah, I think that's what Randy says. Good. Thank you. Now, what you'd like to be headed yes, into? Yes, sir. I think that would be good. It's pretty vague, yes. Okay. Okay. With those changes, anybody have any other questions? Okay. Second, all those in favor signify by aye. Opposed, same sign, ayes have it. Thank you. Next is item 14. Uh, Jason, you're on, sir. Well, I won't take too long as you're speeding through this agenda. Just uh, briefly, you have the, the monthly report in front of you. Uh, March uh, turned out to be a slightly negative month. Started out fairly good in the last couple weeks of the month. We saw a downturn in the markets. So for the month, the plan was down 47 basis points, slightly ahead of the policy index. In terms of asset allocation, you're within ranges, slightly, continue to be slightly overweight to equity. The last couple months we've been uh, raising cash for your operating needs from small cap uh, equities as those are the mo most overweight. As you can see, the, the small cap continues to be about 4% overweight, uh, but overall equities are 2% are overweight. Private equity, international equity, and emerging market equity are slight underweights. Uh, we'll continue with that process as, until we, to, till we bring that down a little bit in, within small cap. And, as we look forward and where we are today, we still believe small caps are a little bit overvalued. Valuations there continue to be a bit stretched. Fixed income, 1% overweight. Uh, that's mainly in core plus, which is the Western uh, strategy. That's done well as we, on the, on the next page, when we look at asset class by asset class, really your, uh, all of your asset classes have done well relative to, to policy uh, with the exception of fixed income. Fixed income has lagged a little bit. Uh, and that has been a result of really intermediate to longer term, we've reduced exposure to interest rate sensitivity and having that interest rate sensitivity over the last year as, as U.S. rates have gone down dramatically and as uh, the European Central Bank and Japanese Central Bank uh, have pushed rates down uh, and bond prices up, that has, has hurt as you don't have as much interest rate sensitivity and it's particularly been the PAMCO absolute return strategy, uh, which has not kept up as much, doesn't have interest rate sensitivity, and the Brandywine strategy, although relative to the world government bond index, it's done well uh, with very low yields. It's, uh, the return is not as uh, good as being in just the, the Barclays Ag over the last, last year. Um, so we'll flip to that, that next page, and you'll just, just going down the line, the, the one year return of the overall portfolio is seven, a little under 7.3%, about 50 basis points ahead of your policy index. Three and five years continue to be very good. So the five-year annualized return of 9.7%, well over your 8% required return, and that's now a little bit more than five years from, from the end of uh, the, the recession in 2008 and 2009. Asset class by asset class, looking at the one-year numbers, large cap, your overweight large cap and your large cap managers have done well, and it's primarily passive. Uh, you have uh, about 50% with Intech and 50% with State Street. Intech has a little bit of benchmark 
uh, risk related to it. So they're trying to outperform by a little bit every year, uh, and they've actually done a good job. So your large cap portfolio has outperformed the S&P 500 by over 100 basis points in that one year period. Within small cap, your small cap allocation has outperformed the Russell 2500 SMID index by uh, over 100 basis points in the last year. Within small cap, you have a balance between growth and value, and really where that's coming from has been the value manager, uh, Ernest. Uh, and that's uh, even in a period where growth has outperformed value. Ernest always has been a more relative value for a value manager. They have a little bit of uh, a growth bias. What's really helped recently is as REITs have sold off, uh, REITs represent a pretty big uh, portion of small cap value and SMID value. Ernest has always been shied away from REITs and had lim fairly limited exposure in the REIT sector, uh, which has hurt them in certain periods. More recently, that's, that's been a big positive for them. Uh, the long short, this is the, the K2 portfolio uh, for a uh, defensive uh, portion of your, your assets, still up 9.4% for the year. Uh, you can see in the month, positive when large cap equity is, is negative and international equity is negative. It's doing what we would expect it to, to do year to date, up 5.1% in a period where the S&P 500 is only up 95 basis points. So the, the hedge component of this is, is certainly uh, doing what we would expect it to do. Um, currently, when, when we... Uh, Printed these yesterday, the HFRI strategic indexes weren't available. Uh, we'll, we'll update this. This is a preliminary uh, report. That's why you see the NA there. International, this is the uh, Harding, Levener, and Lazard. Uh, those two managers I know were in earlier this year in January, both doing very well on a relative basis over the, the last year, up 3% when the benchmark EFI is actually negative over that period. Year to date, we've seen a pretty big turnaround in, in non-US, outperforming US. Uh, the EFI the benchmark up five when the S&P 500, as I mentioned, year to date through the end of March up 95 basis points. As the European stocks uh, in particular uh, have done very well, uh, and you're getting that exposure there. Within emerging markets, both Von Tobel and Wasatch have, have done well. Uh, over the last year, last month was a little bit more difficult. We saw some current uh, currency volatility uh, impacting. O over the last year, and you don't, you don't see this in here, but the, over the last year, the impact of currency in the EFI benchmark to the, the, the dollar-based EFI benchmark to the local currency, same stocks, but in local currency, has had a 20% impact which is exactly what the dollar has appreciated relative to, to the euro and, and generally the yen. So as a dollar-based in investor, there's been a 20% haircut investing in foreign stocks uh, to the local currency of those stocks, but still starting to see a positive return uh, in, in those markets. Fixed income, as I mentioned, still positive, up 4%, but relative to the Barclays Ag, which is up 57 most of that is the allocation within your fixed income. You'll see that on the next page toward, toward the bottom. PAMCO is actually negative 10 basis points on the year uh, versus the, the Barclays Ag, which is up 5.7. So this PAMCO strategy, it's a multi-strategy, low volatility hedge fund of funds. It has some equity market neutral in it, so very low volatility equity strategies. Uh, it has credit hedging, uh, distressed debt strategies. So basically some, some high yield, long and short. Uh, that has not done as well as just being purely and in having interest rate uh, sensitivity in, in U.S. Uh, treasuries and, and agency securities, which has helped the, uh, the ag uh, index. And the Brandywine strategy, uh, doing very well relative to the world government bond index. But again, we know it's not going to look like the ag, but we're rolling up all of your fixed income and comparing that to the Barclays ag and your policy index. Longer term, this has been beneficial. For the year, they're up about 2%. Uh, most of that impact is currency, uh, but the relative yield in this strategy relative to the benchmark is, is fairly attractive. They've been out, the, the ability to outperform that benchmark has primarily come from they are rebalancing into dollars 
Uh, they have over 50% of their exposure uh, in, in U.S. dollar denominated uh, securities. So that's one of the attractive things about this. It's not just saying we're going to invest in global bonds and always be there. They're, they can opportunistically move around where they find the best uh, relative value within bonds. Back to uh, the page before, the, the real assets, which is the roll-up of now commodities and, and your real estate, both opportunistic and the core real estate. The one-year return of negative 1.1, that, that's really incomplete because we don't have updated numbers on the real estate. Those are, uh, they're updated quarterly, the, the real estate numbers, and uh, at the, uh, as we went to press with this, we didn't have the, the numbers on the, the Morgan Stanley strategy. So that's being carried at about 60% of the real assets are being car carried at a 0% return for the, for the month, and so that, that's impacting that. We're, Really, most of that is coming from the commodities uh, being down. Uh, but as we look, the one year, and this is, again, through the end of the year, was 14.1, and uh, certainly positive for the quarter. So that'll, that'll bump up that return for the quarter. When you get the quarter report, the, the quarter return should be a little bit higher than the 729 because of the, the real estate. A couple of distributions uh, in the private equity uh, portfolio. The Mesero Fund, this is on page four. The Mesero Fund distributed 200,000 and the Sigler Guff dis uh, Distressed Fund uh, distributed 157,000 during the month and then made a, a small capital call. Bo all three of those funds are doing uh, very well. Uh, you can see that the far right on that page, the multiple to cost, that that's a representation of every dollar in, how much value you have for every dollar invested. Uh, all of them are up over $1.20 per, per dollar invested, and they're still in the early, fairly early stages of, of those investments. Um, the Mesero Fund, you still have $9 million remaining to be committed that hasn't been called yet, so it's only a little over 50% called. <clears throat> the Distress Fund, Sigler Guff Distressed, that is a, a bit more mature, as you can see. Uh, you committed $5 million in two, April of 2009. Uh, almost all of that has been contributed, 4.8 million. Uh, you've gotten most of that back already. Uh, most of your money and distributions, so you've contributed 4.8, you've gotten 4.78 back. There's two, two and a half million dollars left. D doubtful that they'll call that last 175,000. Uh, and that's, that's the attractiveness of distressed, and during that cycle they're able you know, that money was put to work in a, in a time when there was coming out of the recession in 2009. There was a lot of bargains, a lot of distressed companies, uh, and they were they were putting money to work uh, at very distressed value prices. The turnaround on those types of investments is generally much faster. Uh, the the time to realization or harvesting is much faster than uh, the types of investments that the Mesero is making in. in management-led buyouts, leveraged buyouts, and venture capital. And then the Warburg-Pinkett strategy is a longer-term direct strategy. They're investing in sometimes new ideas, concepts, uh, as well as some large, large turnaround uh, types of strategies. And the opportunistic real estate, the TA Associates, uh, that's on the last page. This is part of your real, real assets allocation. Uh, 4.75 contributed gotten a little bit of distributions back. It's a little bit above, uh, above cost at $1.13 per dollar invested. Again, still very early in, in that, that fund's strategy. That's a 2012, late 2012 vintage. Um, that's an area that we'll want to continue to build out. We're still early on in the development of that process. So what, what about on the, since Sigurd Guff has almost got to its in, are you thinking about another fund to follow on on that? Well, yeah, we're constantly looking not just at funds that you're in, but, but other funds that would, would make sense. Uh, you know, the distressed is more opportunistic, is when the cycle hits. Uh, Sigular Guff will be back raising capital um, at some point. Uh, also, there are other direct distress strategies that may be attractive for, for your fund as you've grown larger and have the ability to make some direct investments. So uh, that will we'll bring to you as, uh, as they become available. 
Okay. Just a, a couple of comments. Uh, we are, uh, we met, br I met briefly with uh, WB and Renee before the meeting just on planning for the conference. Things are coming together, uh, coordinating uh, with, with speakers. Uh, one of the, some of the feedback we got last year after the conference was uh, they'd like to see more panel discussions than single speakers talking about strategies. Uh, so we are working on putting together probably four or five panels out of the nine discussions, uh, which I think is, lends, lends itself to be a bit more entertaining than, than just uh, being spoken to by, by a presenter. Uh, so that's coming together nicely and then working on some of the, the non, uh, the, the, the evening uh, entertainment and, and uh, meals and things. So everything's coming together well. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Any board members have any questions? Objection? Okay. Uh, item uh, 15. The only thing I have is just remember the dates are the September the 23rd through the 25th. So make sure you get them penciled in your calendar because we're going to try to make this a little more interesting. And, and what, what's the word I want to say? Uh, uh, get the audience to uh, participate a little bit more to get them off just other than sleeping. You know, uh, sometimes you get people that they go to, you know, they don't, it, it's not their, what, what, what we think is a good speaker to them, they don't think. But I think this with these panel discussions will be uh, something that will be uh, enlightening to, to everybody. Oh, well, they are some, I'll just tell you. Uh, anything else anybody has? Just going to add, this is uh, my gift to you. My book uh, I kicked out, so hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much, sir, for... Oh. <laughs> What's that last caveat you got in the back? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else y'all think of? If not, we're adjourned at 1024. Thank you for attending.